In this video, I'm going to show you how to use your Trezor device, in this case, the Trezor Model T, uh, to access my Ether wallet. And so the first thing we're gonna wanna do, if you're at this dashboard, you're gonna wanna go to trezor.io and have your device plugged in. I'm just gonna unplug my device real quick to show you what it looked like if you just came here. So I'll just open up a new tab. We'll go to uh, my bookmarks bar where I have trezor.io already bookmarked. This is my Trezor wallet that I bookmarked when I first set it up. So it has a unique identifier for my wallet. And then I'm going to uh, plug in the Trezor. That's gonna talk to the bridge software on my computer, communicate with the web browser and tell it my device is plugged in and ready to go. But it's also locked right now. And so first thing I need to do is unlock the Trezor. So to do that, we just uh, hold down on here and then we type in our pin number, which if you remember last time I said it was five, oops, what happened? Did I hit it? Five, 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 five. Okay, so I've put my uh, pin in and then it's going to check and make sure that my pin was in correctly, uh, was entered in correctly. And uh, there we have it. So now uh, this just tells us we're at the, we're logged in, it's unlocked because it has this logo here and I can now uh, interact with my Trezor. So I'm going to click over here on this top left-hand corner that says Bitcoin. And so if I want to interact with Ethereum uh, in this example, I'll just click on my Ethereum wallet. And it has some, some different options here. We can do My Ether Wallet or My Crypto. Both are great options. I'll just show you on My Ether Wallet. We'll click here and we can go to, this takes us to MyEtherWallet.com, just the regular stock page, which by the way, we can download and run offline. Um, maybe I'll make another video and show you how to do that. But then we can just go Access My Wallet. And this is gonna be very similar depending on what service you're accessing. You're always just gonna click on Hardware Wallet and then select the wallet that you have, and hopefully it's supported. Um, Trezor is very, very supported um, throughout the industry. So we'll click Trezor, and then go to choose this hardware wallet. And now it's going to change over to Trezor.io. It's gonna send us there and say, um, myetherwallet.com is asking permission to read your public keys from your Trezor, de Trezor device. So I'll say allow once for this session. If I'm doing this a lot, I could also check this button that says don't ask again. I'll just say allow once for this session and I'll go export. And so now what this is doing, I should move this over a little bit so that we move it over here. Um, it shows all the keys for this account. So here's the different keys that I can, um, or public keys that I have all these different addresses that are derived from that seed phrase. So I'll just choose this top one. You can choose any one that you want to. Um, loading balance, these should all be zero and new. So uh, do I need to click terms here first? Oh yeah, there's a checkbox here. And then access my wallet. So I've selected that top one. I clicked access my wallet. And now it brings us in here, hopefully. So it brings us to this page for interacting with our uh, address via my Ether wallet. So we can copy the address here. We can copy it to our clipboard. We can paste it somewhere. We can request uh, that, uh, that an exchange, for example, send our Ethereum here. So it's not sending it to my Ether wallet. It's sending it to this address that we're just interacting with our Trezor uh, with. So the, the it's really sending it to, I guess you could say our Trezor because that's where the private key is stored. It's sending it to the address that's controlled by our Trezor. So it's not really sending it to my Ether wallet. Although you're gonna wanna confirm that. You're gonna wanna confirm that this address really is the address that's on your Trezor. Um, but yeah, that's basically interacting uh, with my Ether wallet. Let's go back here. So if I go back to my bookmarks and I go to my Trezor wallet, which is still unlocked. So now I, I won't have to unlock it a second time this session until I actually unplug the Trezor from my computer and plug it back in. Um, so we can look here, maybe we want to interact with, um, let's do Litecoin. So we click Litecoin here and it brings this up and says, uh, gives us some options for how we can interact with our Litecoin wallets here. So it says, note, Litecoin change the format for addresses. We can look at more info about it, figure this out. So we've got starting with an M, uh, starting with a three. Um, but what we want to do is we have, we're in our Litecoin wallet now, so we can go to our account one here. Uh, and if we want to receive, we can just click on receive. And this gives us our address, which is starting with an M. So the, the newer version of the wallet addresses. And I can show the full address right here. This is the full address that I would, uh, that I can receive Litecoin at. So I can right click and go copy, then I can email this to someone and say, here, send the Litecoin here, or I can go to the exchange that I'm using and withdraw to this address. Um, uh, and again, because my my Trezor is unlocked right now, oh, and it's asking me this here, it's, uh, 
Oh, it's showing the address on here so I can confirm it. So I'm going to want to look here, this M9XW9. I'm going to want to make sure that that's the same address being displayed on the Trezor, which it is. That's because you could have some malicious software installed in your web browser that specifically targets Trezor.io and will show a different address here. So you think you're really working with your Trezor, but if those addresses are ever, di ever different, the real one is always the one displayed on your Trezor device. If And this one could potentially be a fake false one. Uh, so you wanna make sure those, that those are the same. That's why it says check address on the Trezor. Okay, very good. I'll hit the escape key. Uh, let's say we wanted to receive some funds from Zcash. We just click Zcash here. And then it loads this up. It's talking to our device, getting the information for our Zcash address. Then I go receive. And then same thing, it shows what this address starts with. And if I actually want to receive Zcash at this address, I just click show full address. And then it brings up uh, this dialog here. This is the full address. So I can just copy the whole thing, select it all with my left mouse cursor from start to end right click and go to copy. I can look on my Trezor too, and I can see that's the right address. So I'll just click confirm there. And I just match that up and make sure that it's the same address. So that's confirmed. And if I want, I can create a new address. Maybe I want to have two, two or three different Zcash addresses for some reason. I can just go show new address. And there's a new one here. So I can get, say show full address. Again, it's going to talk to my Trezor. It's going to show this one, show it on the Trezor so I can confirm. I'll just hit to confirm this and that goes away and now I have a second address that's different. But again, both of them will be restored from that seed phrase. So if this gets destroyed or stolen or lost, uh, I can always recover with that seed. It'll recover all the addresses um, for my the Zcash, Ethereum, Bitcoin, Litecoin, the ones that I've just showed here. So that's basically the steps for interacting um, with different uh, assets, different cryptocurrencies and blockchains uh, on your Trezor while that you select the one you want. And again, some of them are different. I'm not sure like Tezos how that's gonna be. It's gonna send you to connect to your external wallet just like Ethereum. So some of them are gonna want you to connect with a, a third party uh, site or application. And then some of them like the Zcash and Litecoin that we did, you can just get an address directly to it. So hopefully that's made sense, and hopefully this is kind of getting, giving you uh, some confidence to be a little more comfortable with your Trezor. I would recommend doing some small test amounts and maybe even testing it really well and then formatting your device and starting a new real account. Um, but uh, that's just me. But hopefully you found this informative. Go ahead and like, subscribe, comment below if you have any, and I uh, look forward to catching you in the future video.